Okay. What's the time? 5.06. Is that just an audio recording? But I turn I, I turn it into video and post it like I did yeah. the videos. I'll take roll. Please. Dan Dixon. Here. John Barbera. Yeah. Here. Hey. Hey. Vic Christensen. Here. Cynthia Gagne. Here. Chuck Hart and John DeMeglio excused. John DeMeglio was excused. Yes. Mm -hmm. Move on. And that's it. Good. I don't think we have anybody else. Tomorrow. Uh, the, the oh, and Cole. I'm sorry, Cole Carr. Cole Carr. And he's, he's, also, excused. he's also excused, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very well. Um, we will push public comment. Well, assuming Gwen gets here, we, John and I have talked about it, we'll give her 15 minutes total for all her well, stuff for us. I think she wants to talk about yeah. it. But, but we can always come back to it. Can anybody else speak on public comment? No. no. Let, us, let us now move <laughs> to non wet public comment. Uh oh. <laughs> Lori. Thank you for calling on me, Chair. Um, two things I just, I, I copied you two, but I just wanted to bring your attention that um, at the corner of um, Gaffey and the bridge on ramp across from Miraflores, um, it appears that there's people that, that, that it's grown over and it appears that people are crawling in and living in there again. There's junk out there. Um, I did notify um, Tim's office and Christian and copied you. His response to me was that they're not sure whose jurisdiction that is. And I remember that happened before. And I want to say like five or six years ago. So I asked him if he could possibly, I know Craig was involved with that. He was even awesome in that. So let me finish my public comment, please. Um, so uh, I suggested to Christian that he try to look that up, whether it's you know whose jurisdiction it is, because they need to get the brush cleaned out and then find out um, what's in there. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is um, it appears to be private property, but coming down channel right below above. I I don't know how you pronounce it, Parisi. Paris. 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 Oh, okay. The street that begins with P and ends with O. Um, the, the brush, there was somebody, um, actually, uh, a homeless person living there, that's been taken care of. But the brush is, is a definitely a fire hazard. It's a very dry brush. So Christian did not respond. Um, I said both in the same email. He did not address that one. So I don't know if that's something that this committee would want to look into because it's really bad. They had that problem before yeah. they had it all above. This is just a member comment. So anyway, I'm just making those two comments. I realize we can't discuss them. I'm just bringing it to, your, yeah, to everybody's attention. I will breach protocol to say that that is private property. <laughs> it's owned by an individual or a group that wants to develop homes on that hillside property. It's the reason that the alley at the bottom of the hill was created. Mm -hmm. It cuts through the North Forest. Um, so, yes, having said that, there needs to be follow-up yeah, on that. Yeah. Even if it's private property, it's still a fire. Yeah, yeah. so it's an abatement thing. Any other public comment? I have one. Yes, John? Uh, Dan and I just got on the freeway from there. We saw it. And then we went and got off at Harvard. And when I get off at Harvard, it's super high. All yellow, and it's asking for a fire. No, oh, that's not. Uh, I know, but that's the port, and that's what we were talking about. That you know, port has there tons of money to fix it. But there was a fire in that area just like a week or so. A small one acre fire. Mm -hmm. I saw him next door. Oh wow! Well. Yeah. Good. Be Very good. Close public comment. Thank you. And. Uh, that's to Gwen not being here yet, but we'll move on we'll kick her down she's agenda. Not, she's always on time. Hey, uh, hey. Stop, stop. I, I would remind the group the recording is in progress. Um, so, I am for, it, it was partly generated by um, one of our guests tonight um, who sent questions about certain items. And uh, it really kind of opens up a rather more general discussion about the state of things, which is part of item five. But 
Uh, John's in my trip here tonight and seeing the kind of the battered street signs that we passed. It's his son, right? Well, well there's it, 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 part, of, part, of, part, of, part of this is sun, part of it is uh, uh, sometimes it's, it's graffiti and stuff. Mm. But yeah, the science favor. Uh, there's a, my opinion is that item A here is in, in, indicative of the problem that we've talked about in the past. The city, the state, government jurisdictions from, of all levels have no real plan for maintaining infrastructure once it's installed. It all goes on a list, or doesn't go on a list, or it, it is scrupulously ignored. I said this in one of my last board meetings to the councilman. There's always enough money to build something, to find a way, if something's important. There's a way to rehab it if it falls into disrepair. There is no way to replace it if it's in extreme disrepair, i.e. the pool at Peck Park. But in the middle there is a gap. There's never any money for regular infrastructure maintenance. There's money for cleaning out if they can keep the parks clean and tidy. And our, our city crews do heroic jobs in that regard. But, you know, those signs we're talking about are probably Caltrans. Uh, and, and they just, they're, they're, there's no rhyme or reason to it why, why things simply fade into obscurity. They, they're, they're, they, they fade away literally in the case of the street signs. But, there are other points of infrastructure that you see deterioration. You wonder, well, why don't they fix that? Because it's not in the budget, or it's in a budget that is movable and can be kicked down the road to the next fiscal year. So that's one thing in, in relation to this list. Yes, so last night, I do know that a new council member did talk about it while he was campaigning, and since he's been elected, that he's not going to ignore um, public works and public safety. I've never actually heard the faded signs um, in that list. And I do read most of the city council agendas. Oh, you want me to stop? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> um, so, so um, exactly. John, you're interrupting. That's me. Exactly. He's telling you. That's exactly. oh, no, I That's so what I'm saying is, is that um, I know he's made a couple of motions and he's also on the budget committee to make sure. So I would think that maybe um, uh, maybe this committee sending him a letter asking him, this is my suggestion, where is he at on addressing some of these issues and adding the faded signs, because quite honestly, I hadn't even thought of that, but definitely he's looking at sidewalk repair and curb maintenance, um, some of these things. So I think that uh, which since, he did, he, well, since he did, have this as part of his campaign and keeps talking about it, I think it would be good to ask him, you know, because the new budget was approved, how much of the budget is going to this and what is the, the plan? Are we going to be getting some, some funds from the infrastructure, the federal infrastructure? That's different yeah. than the yeah. city. It's a different bucket. Yeah. But uh, you could certainly ask that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come to it. yeah, he's got, he, I know he started, I saw some, when I you look at his uh, Friday report, they have been in Wilmington, they took a few streets that they fixed the sidewalks were really bad, you know. I mean, <coughs> from the looks, they're just as bad here as they were over there, so. I would say they started, they started, yeah, they he started, started, yeah. You make, a, you make a good point, Roy. Yeah. I'm as big a fan of Tim as anyone in the room. I think he's got a breath of fresh air compared to our previous council. Uh, and I think he's on the right track in, in almost every way from the standpoint of uh, constituent services and attention to detail to items like this in the district and that sort of thing. Uh, he knows the city inside and out and he's pursuing the right path. What 
but he can't solve it all. He can't mm -hmm. snap his fingers, which I can't do anymore. I regret because he's a lot. <laughs> he can't snap his fingers and make things happen. Is that a senior thing? Yeah, <laughs> that's the beginnings of arthritis. He, he can't do it all by himself, so, so yes, I, I would love to send a letter encouraging him to pursue some of these things. I'd like to do a breakout session or, or think about this for the next meeting about what that letter might entail and what it sounds like. Um, he needs to be encouraged to continue his good work as far as I'm concerned. But this, we, I, I gasp here, and I, I think it's because I've been doing this so long, and you have too, you all have too, in your own way, and, and on board, and otherwise in the community. Um, it's, it is very much still uh, 1.125 steps forward and one step back. We, and it's often 1.25 steps back, it's all a shell game, and we're trying to step over the shells and keep moving forward. It's, uh, it's, it's difficult. With, with, with him, what I was saying yes. is rather than making the breakout groups and making the list, maybe an easier place to start is, because he knows what the list is, where are you at with all of our public repairs and services, and give him a chance to give us that's a list. Yeah. That, that's my suggestion, rather than making a list that he already knows. Just the one that you know. But give us a list for our That's actually, yeah, that's actually part of what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh. All right. Yes, it is. Um, I saw a pink stop sign. Yeah, stop sign should not be pink. I realize that's private. Or else they are a little... RV living nearby? Yeah. Yeah. This has to be... Apparently Ken's house in Malibu is for rent. You can hear me in... Yeah, oh, yes. It's Barbie's house. Yes, it's pink. Yeah, yeah. 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 I saw that lady. Yeah. Jeez. All right. We're, 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 sorry. Sorry. I, I, I drank. Okay. Sorry. Stop talking about rain now. Um, yeah. No, please start. <laughs> right there. Some papers on the front table. One of each. Oh, okay. Hello, Ray. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Oh, I think too, right? Anybody? That whole, the cook, one clip stack plus the other. Do you know, I think it's so big. I mean, it's like a yeah. long term. And he just seen it. You, you have been for a while. Right. Good to see you. Well, it's, it's obviously too much to take on. Uh, okay. Um, we were asked about the state of enforcement of leash law. <laughs> really, Ray? Exactly. Is that what I was asking? I heard a guffaw. A scoffing guffaw. You want to oh, talk I, a little bit about that? I am right now. I'd be happy to. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want some emails. Oh, okay. Then yeah. you start. De you definitely start. Let's spend a few minutes on H. Yeah. Exactly. You can't take your dog anywhere on a leash. Because, um, can't, or off, off a leash, they're everywhere. But, like, my dogs are leash aggressive, so if another dog runs <coughs> up to them, oh my god, it's, it's bad. And they're, they're everywhere. I can't walk in my own neighborhood. I take, I go to Paseo Del Mar and try to walk my dogs there because I can see who's coming and who's not. People will just come out and look at the car door and they're running. The dogs will go running. In fact, a couple, about a month or so ago, um, some woman was there with her dog on a leash. Some guy opens the door and the pit bull, not, I like pit bulls, but they're strong dogs, came over and killed the dog. <gasps> yeah, I mean, this is on, the same, on the Facebook pages, it's on um, our green camera notifications, like reading it all over the place. My husband was walking our dogs. And two, again, Staffishar, like pit little pit bulls, came around the corner and you know, wrapped around my husband. He went down, the dogs were attacking our dogs, and he ended up getting get stitches. And, but thank God, Mrs. Pedro, somebody driving by, stopped and put our dogs in the car and you know, saved them. Oh, it's nice. This is a wonderful model of this community. Um, Anyway, and then people are posting about it. I mean, if you go to Facebook, the San Pedro Safety, San Pedro, all the different sites, people are frustrated. And 
Especially Avril Park's another good example. That place, I wouldn't even think of taking my dogs. Mm -hmm. It's always dogs off leash. If we would get that an officer that could come in, like we used to have dog catchers, but um, they could come around and you know, first you do a campaign. You know, leash laws are, you know, it's the law, enforce them and put the signs up and let people aware of it, start thinking along those lines. Then you have somebody who goes around and first time, maybe a warning. Second time, a hundred dollars fine. Third time, five hundred dollar fine. You know, it, it just keep and that should pay for itself eventually. And who would do this? You did have to hire somebody. It'd be, it'd be the animal. Yeah. That's that's the fourth time you just shoot the owner. That's, yeah, exactly. That's well, so. and and regardless of how many, if it ends up injuring, at a minimum, another dog or person, you know, additional, you know, fine for right from the start. No, no warning there. If it ends up killing a dog or injuring it or a person or something like that, you well, jump jump up the list. And the system, in theory, kicks in. And so, so the end, I was walking down the sale down with a couple of friends, and this man opened his car door, and his dog came running out. And I backed up, and I said, sir, could you please put your dog on a leash? And he just, he goes, I don't have to. And I said, yeah, but I'm sorry you do. It's a law. And he said, you obviously know nothing about dogs. My dog won't bother you, blah, 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 blah. And, and I just, um, I said, sir, I'm going to ask you again. And, and so I just took off. But, but so what Darlene's saying, everybody knows there's no enforcement. Right. Okay. And I don't know with the amount of people walking their dogs, how this enforcement would look and how we could start to, and if the funding is there for the, the new animal shelter person yeah. to, to do this, because um, I think that's the jurisdiction that would go under, is, is there, um, look, it could be a source of income with the funding. Exactly. But if you do a campaign up front, too, just start, you know, this leash laws are laws, you know, leash your dogs, and just make people start being more aware well, of it. Making, yes, say, one is against the law, two, you will be fined and then do the fine. Yeah, and we could because um, the new person is uh, she was from Long Beach or one of the you know shelters out there. Stacy Danes. Long Beach has one shelter. Los Angeles has I mean, all of Long Beach only has one, one. shelter. Sip, sip, shelter. One. Yeah, but, but Long Beach is huge. But man, that's that, that's that. Maybe it's a beautiful place, but that's all we have. I read the, this. Community impact statements uh, from people about her appointment. They're in favor. No, absolutely. Opposed. Really? Because yeah, I heard people are very much in favor. Oh, no. Well, it's the, the people, the kind of people that would comment in a yeah. uh, in a council file were very unhappy. About For what reasons? Because she's a clone of the one that just left. Mm -hmm. See, and I heard that she doubled, she's a breath of fresh air. Maybe not. That's what I agree. Well, we obviously don't know. Well, More the, the problem is nobody knows. And no, she has she's been, 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 been approved by city council? Yes. Yeah. She was approved last week, to my knowledge. Okay. Well, then we'll find out. 21st. We'll find out. Uh, to, about, to, to your point about enforcement and hiring people to do it, it brings us back to we need a working group because Tim's got a lot on his plate. This is a this is a a multi-departmental issue. It's animal control, it's police, it's recreation and parks, it's all hands on deck to make a difference here. There's no money anywhere in any budget this year to do anything like this. It's absolutely to me, to me, an important critical thing, but it's, we got to start beating the drum now, because there, there, there isn't money for that kind of enforcement, I don't think. Her husband had stitches. He was I understand. But it's sad that people the don't know. The dog was a simple wall like that. It was just a simple yeah, the dog that got well, from the, 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 pro if, 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 the problem is, if we're expecting people to follow simple laws, it's a fool's error. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. Enforcement is needed. Education is needed. But right now, I would predict there's no money for it anywhere. Certainly not in the, in the Department of Animal Services budget, which they're crying, pleading for people to come volunteer to help 
take care of the animals in, in the shelters. You know, they're, they're, so yeah. we talk about patients in the yeah. hallways of yeah. hospitals. Well, there are animals in the hallways of the city shelter on, on Gaffey Street. As a neighborhood council, I guess us trying to start a campaign of awareness would be just a waste of time. I guess. Uh, well, everybody loves or thinks Facebook is so effective or, yeah. or TikTok or whatever it is. It's so effective because everybody uses it for the news source. I, I would suspect maybe that's a place to start. I like, yeah, I, but I how, see. Do you, how do you do it without sounding like a crank? <laughs> without but, sounding like a constant complainer? Uh, yeah, no, but Which, you're just talking you know, about the sign campaign around saying, you know, Leash your dog, it's the law, period. Uh, what does it say, Ray? Um, this letter that, uh, uh, what's her name? Said, Gwen put Patrick. together. The last piece is apparently there's an 18% increase in animal services money coming into the tune of 4.75 million. Oh. And there's an advocacy to make sure that Tim goes out and asks for our animal shelter's fair share of that. Oh, that's cool. That's good. That can help. That's and this is on one of the things she wanted to cover. Good. So it seems to me that that might be a drop in the bucket, but it, it's a start. It's a start. So, um, but it, it's right here and it's associated with Council File 23 0588. Cool. So, the last, it's the last two pages. The, it's the top top of the last page. Great, thank you. There's no, there's no number on the page. No. <laughs> Maybe I get my pages out of order. I'm sorry. Just look for it. You'll find it. But none of these pictures will be caused. That's even an issue. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad Darlene's here. I'm glad you brought this up. I'm sorry, Jonathan. Did you? Yeah. No, it is. He loves dogs. He, uh, well, the people called us and said, like, we'll put our dogs down. I'm like, no. This is the simple thing. Okay. Aggressive the dogs. The request from us is to make sure that um, Tim goes out and asks for our share for this of the show to do something with it. And, you know, like I said, maybe it's a start for that campaign at the very least. No, so the, the, yeah. There's an extra four point seven five million added to the budget of the department of yeah, they, increased, they increased it by 18% boost in funding. Okay. Which what, is what, what is the point of us bothering with the CIS to approve the appointment that's already been made? To me, a better use of us would be approving a, a, uh, something that was directly talking about where the budget money would go or something. She's already been appointed, so I mean, you can do it. Yeah, that's 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 is that what this is about? Yes, it says yeah. letter of support regarding the motion to approve Stacey Dayton as the mayor's selection. Too late. And, uh, yeah. Oh. And having read what I read on the public response in the council file, I'd want to know a lot more about it before entertaining this kind of motion. So, well, it says here that it's going to be July 10th, date of. Oh, that's the date of the council. council. Oh, okay. That's what Gwen wants us to vote on this. Okay. Well, but but so that that um, in regards to that, I believe in my many conversations with Gwen that she was advocating for this before she was approved. Yeah. So, but but because it didn't get any traction from her committee, yeah. Then she's forwarding it over for consideration That's on this committee. Right. So I'm, I'm just saying that that could be the delay. However, yeah. perhaps maybe the letter can be amended to say, you know, right. given community that. approval, you know, when they make her permanent, because she is going to go through probation or, you know, whatever period it is. She can change it during the board. Hey, I would we say that. That, pause, okay? that horse is on. <laughs> She's in. Very good. I, I, so there's two. I'm not, I'm not sure what. Okay, I'm, what I'm hearing from <coughs> Darlene is that there's a, a great need for the whole concept of off-leash dogs to be rethought. That it's not a <laughs> if I want to. It's not a wink and a nod. If not, it's it's a serious question. You know. And, and by the way, the whole question of pit bulls or various breeds of.
chariot being off leash at all, to me, is worthy of consideration. No, none of those off leash. Mary doesn't. No dogs off leash. No dogs off leash. Yeah. Only in places where it's a dog. Yes, we've got a dog. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that does not sense. When you're doing a walk and everything, and all of a sudden this guy's running and his pit bull's there, and he spots a chihuahua or something, the first that his instinct is to clutch. Oh yeah, I was walking my horses like two, not even years much. ago, and I had a boat on a leash, and three pit bulls came running right around the corner, and I go, oh my God, and I grabbed my little one I could hold in that one, and these guys were charging. They saw my dogs and they're coming. I felt one of them jump up in the back of my legs, and I thought, that's it, we're done. But yeah, because he was trying to knock you over. Yeah, and then somebody, thank God, I was yelling and screaming for somebody to help. And I didn't know it, but she laid, pulled her car in between us. So I was going to say, yeah, I, I thought we were done. I thought we were done. You were. Yeah. yeah. There's an awful lot of pit bulls in well, the I like pit bulls. I, I didn't really mean speak. to put us down that path. The, the question is about leashing of dogs in general. Uh, and I'm sorry I mentioned the specific breed. Uh, What's the committee recommendation of how do we want to act on this? Are, are we? Right. Is she asking us to approve the whole letter? Because we can if we're not. No, no. this letter, that's these letters have nothing to do with Yeah, nothing to do with all. Yeah, that's a separate issue. I think. Well, I think we're going to make a letter going to Tim. I'd like to see them hire some dogs on the leash. And force and start writing tickets no. and start enforcing it. So it, it, could, it, could be, but, it could be paid for by, yeah, by the tickets. Yeah, but like I said, we should. We should, you know, like the folks said, we should make a letter up yeah. to Tim and say, what's your outlook on this with dogs that aren't on leashes and, you know, too many dogs are getting hurt, killed, people too many pit bulls that these people let them out and not on leashes. Well, the letter should obviously go to the new general manager, <laughs> well, Stacey Gaines, <laughs> right? Or, 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 or to Stacey Gaines, yeah. Well, you can go to both. Can go to both. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. We can, we can send it to her and Tim. And, the and, he is and our anybody else that we need to. But but Doris actually not just asking for them to do something. She's come up with some ideas. So yeah, I, what you would want to do, I what I'm hearing is the other letter two. is one suggestion is to create some type of enforcement. Perhaps it could be enforcement people, officers from the um, animal shelters. Propose the yeah, idea. The dog catcher, do. right? I'm sorry. Um, has anyone read any charter recommendation, anything from the city that identifies it specifically what the leash law says? If in fact there is, and I'm just suggesting the, the that we look at it and see right. how we could improve upon it. Right. You know, so that there is more I maybe think teeth. It's specific. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I, I don't. We, we would need to pull that up, yeah. Uh, it didn't say little dogs can be all delicious and all dogs can be delicious. And you guys missed the pun, so we can put more teeth in there. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was a good one. But did you catch her pun earlier? I, well, maybe I, I... I was too busy trying to think of my own. I'm sorry. And I suggested Here's that the dog must be restrained by a substantial leash not exceeding six feet and be in the control of a person <coughs> and off property. This is actually county, not city. Yeah. It's the city has one too. It's probably similar, but. Um, there is a, a municipal code here. Um, I don't know if this is city or county, um, so I have to look it up. Again, no person owning or having possession, charge, custody, or control of any animal except cats. <coughs> Which are not in the heat of four season. <laughs> All right, it is, it, yeah, so there, we probably need to do that research. So oh, yeah. I would suggest that we put this on the <laughs> And be in control of a competent person. Does it say competent? That's what it said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> when off property. Well, God help us all. Okay, so um, here uh, we would put this on our radar. Formulate a letter for our next team meeting together. Can we? I got one here. Do you want to Leash laws in, in the city of Los Angeles. Thank you, John. Prohibits it's leash law number 10.32.010. Prohibits dogs from running at large on any public street, park, or other public areas or upon private property other than.
that of the dog owner. A dog must be restrained by a substantial lease not exceeding six feet and be in control of That's the dog. That yeah. competent person went off, off property. property. Yeah, it doesn't say what enforcement is if they don't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, all right. So, so what we're asking is that the city make itself accountable to, to enforce its own rules with respect to animals on leashes or off leashes. Does it say if there's fines or... That's what I'm saying. There should, should, be, be, mean, there should yeah. be something. The law usually is something. So you, found, you both found it quite easily. Do you, do you want to research it and, we'll, and submit something to these guys? Or ask them to research it? <laughs> no, I mean, you, if, if you want me to, I have a... If you would like uh, to help us on that, we that would be nice. Okay. Oh, great place, sir. Glad you came to you. <laughs> and if you're willing to come, yeah. you know. More busy in retirement than I was when I had a job. Hey, you know, if you'd like to join me, <laughs> you for <retirement>. coming. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how valid this is, but I did f just a quick search, and I haven't looked to see the, the details of who it is, but there's... I found a personal injury lawyer website for Los Angeles, and it's according to that, it says $100 fine for the first offense, $250 for the second. And I haven't looked any further than that. Right there on that but, but whether or not that is, you know, like I said, I don't know how valid that is. Where they the point where they castrate the owner. That would be one of those when it causes an injury or death. I see. Yeah. Well, but I, I would, I mean, as far as the campaign goes to, for the awareness, I would say during a certain period of time, a month maybe, whatever that period of time is, to make people aware, there might be a warning. But once you get past that, I don't care if it's the first offense or not, when you have enough time where people should be aware, you start at a fine not at a warning anymore. Yeah, I'm with you there. I would agree with that. So, and, and but is this city or county? This particular one, I don't know. The other thing too is that, like, you like. Let's take a look. Instead of you know, at, because how many animal patrols do you see out there? You, you don't. Not anymore. I you Yeah. But so, but what we can do is, if they can enforce it through our. Police department, where if they see a dog off a leash or it's a pit or whatever it is, that shepherd, whatever, doesn't matter. Doesn't doesn't matter. matter. He pulls up next to that guy and say, "Hey, put the dog back in the car. You're not supposed to have." I mean, Ray, what do you think? Is that? What is somebody's that walking down the street. You know, they don't have a car. They have to have so a it would be nice if they would, but I'm sure they're not going to go out and no, the LAPD's look not for a leash. I'm, I'm just no, no, but I'm just saying, if, while they're driving, if they see somebody walking and the dog doesn't have a leash, it's just not going to make yeah. a dent. It, it, it's a nice, it's a nice thought, but yeah. I doubt that they're going to. Be what, if, what happens if they can find it for it? Like you said, the first meeting. You know, but I'm not sure. I'm yeah, this is and, and what I. I found what what I said that was county. Okay. That was that chapter 10.32.010. I think it was what we were both reading from, mm -hmm. and I think John too. Um, and it goes on to say, again, according to this personal injury lawyer website, <coughs> um, that it, there is no statewide leash mandate. It's municipal, and it also says state law, and and this kind of this isn't necessarily leash or no leash but it can fit into the no leash. Dog owners face strict liable. Liability. Yeah, but that's not what it, it said. It should say liability, but it says face strict liable for a bite, but it should be liability. And that one's under California Civil Code section 3342. So being a civil code, does that mean it's just each city's different? But that's, but that's a bite, and that could be whether the dog's on the leash or not. Sue the right, regardless yeah. of regardless yeah. of leech. Like yeah. But yeah, I don't want to sue them. Right. Right. Well, no, no. When people get sued, they won't keep their dogs up. But I was just saying, it might be interesting for a person. I'm not advocating anybody going to court over it. Yeah. Yeah. But it might be interesting if, if uh, I want to go with you to go over to the animal shelter and ask them what they're in. 
understanding of the leash laws so are you? Yeah, no, we what good point. Yeah, yeah, they should. Yeah, we'll see that anyway. And well, all right. I, I, they might it's, even have a whole thing. It's interesting that we're pushing right up against this whole issue of we spend billions of dollars around the city of the year, but there's never enough to do specific small things that will benefit constituents. That's what the name of the council is supposed to be. Well, if we can get them to even write right. when people adopt a dog from the shelter and they pass it up when they, someone buys a dog. That's a good idea. Yeah, certainly can help. But we have to, I think, make it sound like it's a law. It's the law. It's not, you know, yeah, we're not people, when you can have a picture of teeth. On yeah, it's not guidelines, it's the law. Yeah. It used to be more enforced before. I know. It was. Especially at the parks. Somebody yeah. used to be sitting there and all of a sudden you get to it. The element of shame used to be an effective tool in the arsenal of keeping the peace. Mm -hmm. There is no such yeah. element. Nothing, nothing is shameworthy. And if you do shame someone, yeah. you are the one judged. Oh yeah, you're right. No, you know, that's, that's true. I was at the bank. And yeah, that's I was crazy. At the handicap spot, and I said, "Oh, by the way, that's handicap." And he told me to shut up. He said, "This is a handicap. There were two spots. It's a handicap, and then the middle where you took your wheelchair out." And I said, "No, where it's marked, it's blue, blue, and blue." I said. You can check the book. I said, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Right. I just want to let you know. Yeah, yeah. Time. He got mad. He went to bed, and I got yelled at. You, you're talking about the blue lines that have the little the the hash marks. marks. That's, 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 that's for Lytton if it is a wheelchair. Yeah. yeah. So said, that's to give space said, for them to have. I'm park here because I'm only, I was only going to be in the bank for you know, 15 minutes. And the bank had to There's no time on it. So you wanted her to go on to her next one? I wanted her to be here. I had to see. All right. So, it was, okay, let's move on. Okay. I think the uh, animal uh, visit to the shelter is an important thing. And, and putting together a uh, letter a lot about okay. Okay. putting together a letter referencing everything we've talked about here is so, good evening, Gwen. Glad to see you. Happy to have you here. Um, let's continue on with. I'm sorry. With, uh, I see. Yeah, trash service. That's Darby, too. Expense. Uh, you, you wrote a compelling list of how your trash costs had gone up over the years. So, bottom line is, this is typically. City manager. <coughs> uh, if Diana were here, she could give us chapter and verse out of city manager, but it was complained about. <coughs> we warned city sanitation. You know what's going to happen here, don't you? You are condemning apartment owners and condo owners to a never ending series of price increases. Mm -hmm. That's what happens with a monopoly. And the Wild West, I use the term Wild West, it wasn't the Wild West. It was simply the fact that some carriers and providers were more careful than others. Some, you know, some of them left litter and all that sort of. There were issues with it, but it kept the competition kept the price relatively in check. The minute the city decided to do this, and it became a done deal, under the last mayor, I think, uh, we were, you folks were doomed. So how did we end it? And how do we fight back? What do we, what do we do? You start electing different people. Okay, so one. <laughs> no, no, and that's, that's clearly becoming increasingly impossible in this city. Uh, because people have a very authoritarian mindset in terms of government is good, government's going to make it right, so we have to go along with it. And I am dynamo, lifelong Democrat. But it's what we're seeing. It's what we're seeing. And it surprises me that younger people see this as a good thing. The fact is, there should be a mechanism to protest, to uh, ask for uh, relief. There should be a mechanism for it. And there may be, because I'm just talking out like that. What do, they, what do you mean if I guess they see, they see what as a good thing? 
the, the almighty government. To fact, the government decided it was time to step in and end the competition in commercial trash pickup in this city. They turned it into areas. So one or two at the most, but one trash out you, <coughs> you and your fellow dwell, residence dwellers you know, can't go out and hire someone else. You can't do it. And you can't even get our own little private one. No. But like, oh, no. I'm not so that's... And I, I will tell you that my son, daughter and son-in-law live in the 134 unit Harbor Islands. They had private trash collection at first, and the city simply reached down and said, no, that's it. We're taking it over. That was it. But this heavy now, like that. now that, yeah. in fact, is probably a good thing for them because the city, it's not the cheapest trash collection in the world, but it, it is it goes up at predictable rates. It's regulated. It, ours is not. Well, it, it's regulated. Yeah. What do you pay for yours? We went from we were at 170. And that was about six years. How many units? Oh, five. Five units. And now we're at seven hundred. So that's thirty something. Seven hundred. We're at seven hundred and forty some odd dollars, I believe. It's seven forty-five. So for each so unit. So you know, no, but for per month. month. Per month. Like we've gone from thirty dollars a month per unit to one hundred and fifty dollars a month. Yeah. Per unit. Who that's that outrageous. Is it uh, Athens? Athens. Yeah. That's, it. that's outrageous. I get I get the Athens bill at the assistance league, and we have. The 30 gallon bin, and then we have the two, the green one, you know, yeah. and we have the, uh, the blue one, the sort of recycle one, and we have a cardboard recycle one that closes it. We paid $200, $295. Did you get an increase? They increased it last year. I'd we'll be uh, happy to pay that. Last year, last year by, by, by $30 something. How many units? If I but this is just one, But this is just one bin, and we were it, it, they were going like, how come we're paying, you know? So is this the same boxes, thing? You, you know? write to Tim and say and lay it out. Like it's, it's, I, I don't know if he has any sway over mm -hmm. The city made this decision. So well, the mayor. He's the city. It's, what? He's the city. Yeah, but they they set up an entire new structure. They yeah, took away. The opportunity for competition. competition. We can't fight city halls, what you're saying? Yeah, no. but no, no I hold on. Sure. Athens ain't city. It doesn't matter, they're a private company. No, no, no. City John, John, John I, I, I led you astray by mentioning Harbor Highlands. Um, Darlene is in the department of condo con uh, yeah, uh, condos. And they had the right to choose their trash collector for decades, forever in this city until this decision was made a few years ago in the name of the green future, in the name of Unity, uh, they want us all to be the same. The name of I, uh, I don't know that sounds name a little more well in, but, but I, I, you're not far off. They, there was a reason for it, and the reason is that money. Money. The, 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 the big collectors like Athens, who now have these contracts, put the little fellow's out of business. I don't understand how that's an argument for this. <laughs> I don't well, what I'm getting at, I don't, does, what? does Athens going through the city for doing this? They have a, they have a, city, they have a contract. city contract. They have a city contract. Yes. So the point is, you're, in, in what period of time has it gone from $30 a month to $150? Um, five, five years? Yeah. But it was, it was from, the whole building was like 170 to 740. So, okay. my knowledge, yeah. so that's, I'm sure it's well beyond the rate of inflation. Oh, heck yeah. So, the, yeah. And, and the, does anyone have a suggestion what can the well, owners do? Let me bring out too there are people in um, uh, low economic areas that can barely even pay their rent and or mortgage. Yep. So the inequities here and discrimination yeah. against this freaking is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that might be, what do you think, another angle to come at this? There's an angle. Uh, yeah, we've got a single mom or two jobs trying to pay well, in, in our condo. Yeah. And one, one question is, does the city subsidize any of this? 
depending on zip code or economic situation. Yes, sir. I think that to have sent ahead for I'm sorry. When this happened, they did it to our condos too, and they changed over, and I was kind of mad because it was high, and I didn't hardly have any garbage because I eat, you know, uh, raw food a lot. So I just called the city and said, I want to cancel my trash collection. And they said, you can cancel it, but we're still going to charge you. We don't care. And I was just shocked. And I said, well, what if I only had one can out, you know, instead of, because we only get two. People get, other people get three. And they said, it doesn't matter. You're going to be charged, and you're going to pay it, and that's it. So you don't have to have the, the one for the whole building? I mean, we, we are, we can't have our own. We have separate ones. ones. Yeah. But they, they just said that was it. They said they didn't care. That's what it was going to be. I even did that with the gas company. I said, I don't want gas anymore, and I don't use it except for my dryer, and I hang my clothes up. And they said, you're paying gas. It doesn't matter. That's why I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> now, I, I, I have a complete ignorance when it comes to, uh, you know, what it is when apartment buildings, uh, condos, and things like that. But DWP, is, their bills are inclusive where you get, you know, your power, your and water, garbage. and your sanitation, garbage. your trash, your trash pickup. Is, do they and still so have that when even if you're as a member of an association? Yes, we do. So exactly. when you see, when, when the BWP sends you your bill, are you still getting charged for sanitation fees that are not? Being utilized because you're paying separate fees for private. Do you pay DWP? The cigars. I, I just get, I get a bill from DWP and it has sanitation and water and I use this check. Do you pay a separate trash bill to another vendor? Not that I know of, no. No, that's who the separate bill is. That's, 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 that's part of the LADWP. Look at her DWP. Look at short bills. Yeah, John pays that one's fine. Because maybe you're going to check it out. Because it seems to me that it's kind of like double dipping. Double, well, yeah, I would yeah, say double, double jeopardy. Double pain. Where, you know, so, you know, you're paying yeah. trash. Where does the $750 figure come from? Athens. Uh, they sent us a bill every month. They sent it to your association. Association, yeah. On top of that, and let me ask you this, Darlene. So, because what? I'm in a condo now, too, and um, they did an assessment for composting. Did you get an assessment? Okay, so well, I raised that. Okay, so again, the inequities for people who can barely pay their rent, okay, not that they don't care about the environment, but, you know, so they added the uh, um, association, the, what is it, the HOA fees went up when consoles came in. I don't know if that's part of the sanitation contract also. Yes, my my neighborhood council gave me a composting by Right, well, that's not that's the point. So you, can, you can use it. It doesn't matter whether you're using it or not. You're paying for it. Correct. Um, that's a great question, whether DWPs, they're hailing it as the next great step in, in climate to control and all that stuff. But, but they're asking right. you to dump it into your regular trash bin. They're no, giving no, you a separate, separate bin. They're giving you a separate bin. No, no, they gave you a separate bin oh, because okay. you're paying. But we have the composting thing. And if I re remember reading the instructions, mm -hmm. you save it, and then you dump it into this, you That makes sense. Into the well, I, I called the garbage people, and they the said that they don't, right. they so, don't separate it. It all goes in, and they just want to see how people do it, and people will do it, <coughs> how long it takes for people to do it. It's just, so it just goes into your green bin, or whatever green bin. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. mulches with your grass and everything. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just an experiment on us, what no, they're I charging us. I guess you're right, it's an experiment. Go ahead, yes. So, Athens is a separate entity, yes. and that really should be researched because that is the, the, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. They do separate out everything. I don't know how they do it, but they have a system, and it might be even worth taking a tour of separating out everything from the recyclables from the goop. You know, they we have separate bins. Oh, I think oh, you have separate bins, but I'm talking about even the um, all inclusive bin. But um, in regards to the composting. So in smaller cities, like Petaluma, for example, they have a black bin that is, in San Jose, they have a black bin that's this big. That's it for a house. This is how big it is. And they pay an exorbitant amount of money for their, for their stuff. The, the green bin and the blue bins are much larger. 
So the big expense is in the black bin, in the stuff that has to be put in a quadruply, it's like almost toxic waste. Essentially what it is is toxic waste and what they do to line it and they need to find space for it uh, for these places to dump this stuff. And it's, it's getting, incinerating it or doing whatever they have to do to it is getting more and more expensive. We don't have real estate just for dumping. So, so I think that the next thing for LADDWP is you know, they're probably, I mean, it's for smaller bins for the black. But yeah, you're supposed to put everything from the pizza box, as long as it doesn't have shiny plastic on it, to the moldy cheese and the half-eaten hamburger, put it, and the rotten meat. Cooked food? I don't know. Cooked food? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all. As they say, food stained paper. All food. Is food this, stained yeah. paper. Pizza boxes. It's a list. Yeah, and it's. Plates that you had spaghetti on or whatever yeah. it is. That's the, green the tremendous flaw in what I'm aghast over is that they have not made a serious campaign. TV, news, media, little kids, you know, on kids' cartoons and a social media campaign telling you exactly what's going on. That's right. It's, it, it's unbelievable, but... Uh, but with that, the green, the green charge, that's an interesting thing that they're doing for the service that nobody has educated on. Unless it's a punishment thing for not having done it yet. You know, they, they are considering fines at some point, and they've kind of said that. I don't know if some, some condos are already seeing... They threatened the condo that you would get fined if you didn't, because my roommate was the HOA president. Yes. And, but he doesn't know if each unit's doing it. All he knows is he got the green bin there, and got green bin pickup, and gave literature to everybody in the building, but he can't make them use that. But, but going back to the original part that Darlene was asking about, um, what would be the, the next step to, to write a letter? I, I will fight City Hall to our council member, talk about the inequities and the mayor, too. and, and the, well, the mayor, and, and see if they can put through a motion to get this looked at. It's just because the city council six years ago, <coughs> you know, a lot of new members of city council and a new mayor. So I think it's worth trying to address. Uh, thank you. That's true. Inflation for cost. I'm intrigued by if you pay the same sanitation. I'll leave the bill and I can come out and tell you that we do. Okay? Because I thought yeah, sanitation was trash. Yeah, yeah. sanitary trash is not. <laughs> okay, so it, maybe it wouldn't be on your individual bill because you are in a kind of, you know. I haven't rented a place in 50 years, but usually when you rent a place, the, the, the landlord covers. Water comes to us separately. Water and the yeah, water. Yeah, mine does it. Well, and every time the association dues goes up, my rent goes up. Yeah, yeah I just said that. So, you usually see stipulations in how we We cover water. And really? Trip. I don't know. Well, it depends. It depends. Oh, yeah, they're all different. Yeah, I'm thinking. Don't put any depends down the toilet. Oh, if you don't want to do that. Thank those you for not, saying, insinuating that we use depends. Those are not mulch. Anyway, uh, remember that. Yeah, I'm gonna remember that. So, <laughs> so this this to me is something that should be looked into. I can't believe nobody else has like already approached city councils with this. This is just so wrong. Well, uh, they, they have, and we just haven't heard about it. it. You know, I'm just gonna add. There was a report that came out last week from the Bay Area saying that a good portion of people becoming homeless are becoming homeless strictly because of economic reasons and a lot of these people would have even had a $300 subsidy, it could have prevented a huge amount of homelessness and it's this kind of stuff. And it's getting higher and higher. Well, if, you, if your trash bill is 150 bucks a month, then wow. Yeah. What happens if you don't pay your trash bill? It's part of your deal. Yeah, you're sure you're going to steal your ass. No, you can find another way to do it. Eventually, you won't let you. Property owner.
owner eventually gets the lien against the property. Correct. That's what they told me. They would sell. See, if we were if we were in Oregon, you just in the only property, you just take a big hole and burn it. So we're taking downtown and just drop it off. So if I understand it, Darlene, you're gonna you're gonna look at the lease issue, help the lease issue, and I'll find it. Do some research on it and report back. Okay. Or I'll be put back. Yeah, thanks. Because this this is this is important. It is safety issue. It's not, but it's not urgent like it has to be tomorrow. I want to do it right. Is that you raising your hand, right? Yes, it is. I would like to suggest that this issue about sanitation and DWP and all this stuff, it might be worth a, a, um, a presentation so that they can help us understand this building thing and how it affects people who live in condos, large apartment complexes and things like that, so that, so that we have a clearer understanding so we know in what direction we go with our advocacy. Okay. Presentation by who? Department San, of Sanitation. San, well, Department, San, Department San, of Water and Power. I mean, yeah. well, you know, I mean, if it's all in San, 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 San. whatever, yeah. because yeah. I think I think if you look at that, you're also going to look at your water bill, and right. then you also look at your power bill and things like that, because it's it's yeah. it's oh, it's, it's, good it's good. just seems to me that there explain, are explain to us because why. I, I'll be honest with you, I think. Going to these single uh, service providers like Athens, they probably pay the city for the contract, and then on top of that, you know, the city gets money for that, and Athens will, will you know, uh, get its money back given the fact that they're paying you, you know, you're, you're paying X amount of dollars your fees. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that. it'll help us frame. I agree. The, the, the questions and everything like that, so we know in what direction to study and... Are you saying part of the fees go back to the city? I'm, I'm saying that it, I wouldn't doubt, because I've seen in other, you know, in other municipalities, that if they're going to have sanitation, one sanitation contractor, or broken up by region, this, I'm sure the city does not give that stuff away. At the time, yeah. at the time this was first broached, the first question was, who's lining who's paying yeah. their pockets? Is that true? Sure. sure. Yeah, that's probably still a fair question. Um, so, um, I think, do, does the committee think we need a motion to uh, invite this DWP and sanitation board to come talk on this subject? At our next meeting, or do we need a motion? Yeah, I was like, I'm not going to say okay. we're going to. Okay, the co chairs write a letter. Well, I mean, your your committee can make the motion and. Do you know, a motion to. Do we need a motion? Just well, that's what I'm asking. Well, yeah, because that, that gives you your running orders to do, your ready, orders. To, to do the action. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> asking that we move. You move? Contact them. And see if we can get their uh, presence at our Northwest meeting. At our next committee meeting. I would copy your council committee or our. Wait, but we're talking. Board we're talking board 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 yeah, yeah, it can be whatever you guys want because this is your committee and you're it's initiating the study. Yeah. Yeah. It can so be I, here. I motion that we get them on move to come and uh, give a presentation at our board meeting. Do I hear a second? Moved and seconded. Uh, I would, yes, I would offer a <coughs> amendment that we make it specifically for this committee to start rather than the board. You want a presentation to this committee? I want a presentation. Yes. There's only a few of us. Why? We should go for the I second board. the amendment. Thank you. Well, I think discussion for your amendment, yes. it, it's not a bad idea. The um, What I would suggest that you do that is you do some extra outreach to get community members to this meeting and I would be very specific in the request to them what you want covered because they're going to have their agenda right. what they want to do so you know and have examples of Darlene's bills we want to bring you know something like this I'd be very specific but um, go to the outreach committee if this is what happens and get them to promote the heck out of it so you fill this room and just the, the question that has come up just organically in this discussion probably compostable yeah is uh, <laughs> do people who 
pay as part of their rent or rent, you know, or mortgage if it's a condo, to, to rent yeah. there, or they charge the same sanitation fees. Or, or is it billed to the to the owner's address and the owners send out There's a lot of questions there. There's a bunch of questions, aren't there? Yeah. So but again, I think it's another reason I think it's a good idea is because I think this needs a fair amount of discussion that you don't have the, the leisure to do necessarily at a board meeting. Right. So flush it out here yeah. and then decide if you want. I think that's a good yeah. idea. So um, the amendment, is that right? It's an amendment. Yes, an amendment. The, the amendment to, to the motion. To, to the motion. The amendment being to the initiate contact with these departments here in the committee. The issues committee. The issues committee. Um, all those, do we have to call names or all those in favor? Well, no, yeah, we can. Yeah. Do a hand. No, we'll we'll Aye. We're not on the committee. Cynthia? Are you coming? Cynthia? Yes. Yeah. All right. I think it should be before the board. Oh, it will. Oh, it will be. It will. We're going to first. It'll, it'll get start, it starts here. Yeah. Dan? Aye. And me? Aye. Who is me? You can't, John. Say, you can't say me and I at the same time. That's so, so the, now that you vote on So the motion as amended. Right. The part of the motion being to get into this and find out a bunch of this stuff, uh, which will be written as a fully fleshed out motion. Um, yeah, Dan, I'm very sorry, but we have a dinner appointment. <laughs> so we're going to have to dug out. Good. Um, so. good. We, we got through. Thank you. Your thanks. Well, no, you didn't get through the last one. Yeah. That's just being taken care of. Well, the traffic? Yeah, I got that. They're doing curb cuts as usual. It took a year. Thank you for adding it. Thank you. Thank you. So, this was uh, fun. <laughs> so, the motion is saying No, we're still, yeah. no. Yeah. We haven't voted on the motion as amended. Yeah. Oh. I interrupted. I'm sorry. Yeah, we did. Okay. We just did. No, we voted on the amendment. Oh, we did not vote on the motion mean? as amended. Oh, yeah. So, now back to... I have moved that, that we that we have the... We, I move the motion that we do it here in the issues. Or no, that we get with the DWD and uh, trash and right. all that. And that first contact will occur here in committee. Yes. That's, that's the motion. Now we vote. Yeah. So vote. And then, oh. so... Uh, You may have to get it from the recording too. Because you weren't writing when we were talking earlier, so. Well, listen to the tape. I'll just. So you, we, we'll get the recording, but write as much as you can just in case it runs out of battery. You want to call the roll? So, yeah. So in order to do the motion that I have that we do, start with here. Yes. Yeah. Vic. Aye. Cynthia? Aye. Dan? Aye. And John? Aye. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, John, do you want to give a brief summary of item B, the disruption of traffic on Western? Yeah, real quick. I've got my pictures and stuff I have on my phone. Enough. So what, what's all the traffic and mumbo jumbo going on? We have the corners again. They're redoing the corners. Like if you go by Peck Park, if you turn left on that little street that takes you down Peck Park, right there on that corner, they put a new pole in and they cut the corner out. So they're making it wheelchair, I guess, accessible or better. Across the street, they're going to be doing, they've already assessed them. That's why they were on the other side. Now, the other thing is also Western, when you make a left on Wayman. Right there, starting okay. where the school is, all the way to just before you get to 6th Street. They're working on the sidewalks and everything. They're going to be Smooth. cutting there. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That's so they got them already combed off. It's and, all, like, and it's already bad, so now it's going to yeah. get worse. So yeah. we can anticipate more traffic, yes. road work disruption in the coming months. Yes. Mm -hmm. at, yeah. least, at least we know. At least they got it, just like before, how they dug it all out, the corners, and they left it. Uh, I guess they're waiting for cables or this or whatever it was to 
get there and stuff. So there is their city is doing a lot with the sidewalks there and the corners of the sidewalks, making the wheelchairs bigger, I guess, that accessible or yeah, um, the motorized scooters. I have good news though. They are in the Ninth Street and Western, so that won't have to be done. No, but they're doing it in front of Willenberg. They're doing right. all but the. But they already did that Ninth Street. Yeah, they did that all four corners on Ninth Street. So they're moving south. By the way, separate yet somehow connected. Uh, if you see a vehicle parked in the middle of the street, people working under the street along Capitol and down Western for the next year, that's where they're. Digging access to the um, tunnel. Clearwater. 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 Yeah. They, they were, they, it they, was so strange. There was a truck in the middle of Capitol in front of Target for like two weeks. And I just started <laughs> running. I didn't even think. Yeah. But that's what it was. But they were now over by Amelia. Yeah. A couple of weeks yeah. now over that's, there. So they're going up. So they're going. What they're doing is they're, they're drilling in and they're making their. Sensors and everything, so where they know where to, yeah. Because right. the, the guy, machine works off the sensor. I was talking to the guy afterwards when we had our meeting with him. He said that, because I said, did, I said, San Pedro has a lot of different soil compositions. And he, I said, did you find that out? And he goes, oh my gosh, yeah. Hmm. He said, I didn't realize that. We didn't think it was that much, but it, you know, every two feet it could change. And I said, yeah, it does. Well, yeah. So yeah, they huh. have really having a lot more. Alice Perry's Peninsula was an upthrust island. Exactly like Catalina. So whatever layers are in Catalina, that's in Palos Verdes, and it, it happened over a million years. So oh yeah, just just go down to Royal Palms. Certainly, and the you can see all the layers. Yeah, certainly the composition of the soil changed and so anyway. and moves and, and continues to. Yeah. So thanks for that information, John. Yeah, and five, we should just it's, we've, since we talked about. Um, there is money that they're doing all of the stuff for potholes and repairs and stuff. Tim, we could just do that letter, blend it in with the other. The made it stop saying letter. Yeah, <laughs> what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm grabbing at on item five is. Uh, yeah, that's different. As we know, uh, it's difficult to find out what is being done to infrastructure in our neighborhoods. Uh, who you call, but what's the plan uh, with respect to all sorts of things, sidewalk repairs, uh, installation of traffic control, uh, street resurfacing, final repairs is sort of the least of it, because that's a, that's a movable feast, that you can actually get that altered. Uh, it, it can be an emergency pocket thing. But I, for the last six months, I've gone back to the example of what happened in our neighborhood, where the okay, guys came out and um, put up a stop sign out of the blue. Uh, a, a, a one stop sign at the corner of Lyler and, uh, and Gatun uh, that we wondered about. John asked the guy, he talked to the guy in the city, and the guy said, oh yeah, we have a schedule. We did a traffic study 10 years ago and it's time, <laughs> right, mm -hmm. essentially? Yeah. Maybe just because it was 10 years from when they did it, they decided to put it in well, the no, checking it again. They, exactly. They follow the same. And yeah, they could have built 50 new homes or 500 new homes that funnel people through that neighborhood. And they, they wouldn't know that. So it's, it's all done by schedule. It's, it's all numbers. It's all numbered from one to a million. Yeah. And that's how they. The sign came up. It could have been number nine thousand six hundred twelve. Yeah. Put a sign on my own going yeah. uh, northbound. But it doesn't matter that times have changed. Your traffic has changed. Uh, no, no, it's the same. Not, not to them. It's the same thing we asked about. Dan, I asked about the alleys and everything. I mean, there's alleys. Dan and I drove around. I, I, like I was saying, you know, I, I mentioned it last night in Youth and Outreach. I mean, you don't have to go to the desert to ride a yeah. dune buggy. You can. Moon, Slow down. <laughs> Moonscape does not yeah. adequately describe those but, I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, you know, it, it, I mean, garage doors where the, the, the actual alley's higher than a garage door. Wow. Yeah. So, it's pretty bad, but what they said was, we've already, six years ago, they assessed the 
all alleys in San Pedro. And they all have a number, so when they get to them, they get to them. So what I'm thinking about here is, What's up? wouldn't it be interesting for we citizens if we could go to a central website or department, but let's say website, let's be modern, a central website that has a schedule the list of schedule. these departments. I, I think you can go with an department, you can probably find these lists somewhere. But and <coughs> it would make sense to ask the city to provide a website where each department has a, its schedule for whatever it is. Cleaning of pools, um, these these kind of uh, infrastructure repairs. Brushing the street. Street, street, street sweeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, yeah, right. Which, as near as I can tell, doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. Oh, I, one. Okay. I have. I when I first moved here eight years ago, I used to see one go up Capitol. Yeah, I have seen. We used to have them come by our house on a million. But in a it's in time. years. Okay. You haven't yeah, seen a street. We had one before. Yeah. And of course, there was no thought given to the fact that on my street, for instance, uh, there are cars parked continuously the entire length of the street. The poor guy can't even get to the curb. Mm -hmm. Well, he that's drives straight down. Well, that's that's down. when you have the fines for people who are parked on trash pick or on uh, street sweeping day. I, I know, and that seems to work in other areas. But do you think they don't go up capital and stuff? I, I just, need I, it? It's a I mystery. Need it. It, it's a mystery. Right? Look at look at Target that that with the sweet plan, you know. But I don't think they would put that make it public. I bet you they don't want to. I suspect. Oh, I don't think. Permission. Yeah, I'm sure they've got it, but yeah, do they want to make it public? Not likely. No. Well, you have a million complaints per day. Huh? Well, but I don't want this and what the, they, the, they were just being. The, the, listen, I haven't seen a Lincoln sweeper, uh, you know, street sweeper, or even an FMC street sweeper. My neighbors actually have been sweeping our alley. When they do their garage, they clean it, and then they do their around their garage. Well, that's very neighborly. And they, they, they's probably right. You're probably right. Maybe the city doesn't want to share this information, but doesn't hurt to ask. Doesn't hurt to ask. I think it's important to me. How about not just ask? Say people say, no. would like to well, see this. What is it about? Demand, more. demand it or whatever. I'd like to do some research and figure out how this information is kept within the department, whether or not it's public information. It's expenditure of taxpayer dollars. That's right. You know, if you, if you look hard enough, you can see most of the Pentagon budget if you know where to look, except for the super secret stuff. Are the port but budget? but fixing sidewalks on the North Cabrillo Avenue is not a state secret, or shouldn't be. So I, I think, again, it's, I would put it under the mantle of research, but I would like to look into this if the committee's agreeable. MI5, then MI5. I hope we don't have to. I hope we don't have to do that. Um, so we'll just say for number five. Uh, go to go to further A or A. No, that's that's a different issue. I know. Could we put those two together? What? Could we put? The stop signs and, and this other stuff too together is all maintenance and infrastructure. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, that so might be too burdensome on the recipients. Yeah. They might not be able to handle more than one issue right. at a time. Gotcha. <laughs> in in theory, yes, but in reality, uh, you might want to do one issue at a time. Right. Or those, per per level, one issue per level. Thing, and that's all they do. And leave the rest. No, well, maybe number five that were available would make. A self evident, I don't know. Mm. Well, that's true. I'd like to pursue this and, and see if we can research how to get to this information and how it might be made available to the people that pay for it, pay for all this work. We <coughs> now move backwards to item three. Which is you? Go ahead. By the way, I printed all. They get, well, I had uh, fleshed out a couple of the items. Um, so you got the uh, resume for Karen Bass? That's no, no. For Stacey. For Stacey. I mean, yeah. she's already there. Yeah. You know what? 
the resume and the letter from Karen Bass. The, the resume for Stacey Danes and the letter from Karen Bass. Did you, did you receive that? She's She's on her way to being approved, unless she was voted in the last couple of days. So who said she was approved then? On the 21st, she was approved. It was on the 21st, okay. Yeah, and she's going to start on, on the okay. 1st of July, yeah. I predict she will be controversial, but that's just... Her, her appointment beginning mm -hmm. July 3rd. She is going to be controversial. Which is Monday, the day before... Uh, oh. Oh. Good, okay, so I would say that's moved at this point. Yeah. The letter supporting her appointment. Well, well with that... Um, I had considered some caveats to that, or some some requests to um, look at for the new general manager and to look at certain items. Um, and and to urge her to work with the staff and volunteers to analyze the current conditions to help alleviate the program and the overcrowding. But um, there are some items that are probably better directed to the city council, but they are they are intended to help the general manager with her her problem. Um, one thing that I wanted you guys to know is that one of the reasons for the overcrowding is because in 2016 the city of Los Angeles decided to go no kill, and in collaboration with that. Um, there was the foundation, the No Kill LA Foundation of best friends who uh, promised to be the supportive foundation. And they, what they get is like a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars per adoption, per adopted animal. They're not a free, you know, they're not part of the animal services where it's very low, low for adoptions and almost always, you know, funding. They they get money for it, um, but they provide. They provide an outreach that animal services can't possibly meet, which is clean, pretty cages and that kind of thing, and, and adoption events and fairs. So in order for no-kill to work, there's a lot of animals that are unadoptable. Um, because be sickness or elder? Well, you know, they can with the, with the foundations, yes. Those, those are adoptable. You can get the senior events and things like that. But there are animals that um, have um, food aggression, where if you put down the food and a little kid goes and tries to pet them, they snap and they bite. When you have an animal that has these kind of aggressions, if the animal shelter allows that animal to be adopted, somebody can get hurt. They're liable. And what's occurring right now is that that as of January 1st of 2023, no kill, best friends, quit. They only are doing one adoption shelter, and that's in West Los Angeles. West Los Angeles has the benefit of, of this kind of program, but the major program over at, at Mission Hills it's gone. They have ended their relationship and there doesn't seem to be a relationship. So one of the problems is, is that the, the shelters are filling up with animals that are dangerous. To that, other animals. That the volunteers cannot walk. They, cannot, they are not allowed to interact with that animal because they can get hurt. Um, only the staff can. The, and they're, they're unadoptable. So it's a serious problem, and it's creating it's creating issues. Um, another thing is is that uh, the director of volunteer programming. I think that there was a mention of that on one of these items. That that the director of volunteer programming at the moment um, is not he doesn't have a job. I mean he's he's been he's been put on administrative leave. Why is that? For something that's not he, he did something wrong. Okay. He did something wrong, and so he's been put on administrative relief. But what that means is that it's, the position is unfilled. it's unfilled. Yeah. They can't go and hire somebody else because it's... But that's harming the animals, right? And this is true. It's the rules. It's the rules. So, and on top of that, I mean... Um, 
Social media, um, I've noticed this over the years. The social media department in, um, in, uh, the, in animal services no longer is doing campaignings. You know, they're, they're not putting out social media graphics. They're not uh, collaborating with, with um, news, news services for um, a scheduled series of events, such as just before July 4th, for the first, first couple of months, they'll do a Clear the Shelters event. It's absolutely <coughs> crucial. Clear those shelters because when the fireworks come, they're just going to, it's, they, they fill up. It's, it's always a crisis, but this is the way <coughs> that they have these cycles. And um, the, the social outreach uh, department needs to be assessed. There needs to be some kind of accountability for them because they are, they're not doing their job. There are, there are more and more, but with that, I mean, as a, as a sign of this, um, if you go to the Animal Shelter website and you look at their email releases, their, their notifications, if you get on an email, you can find out news with, that's going on in the Animal Shelter. Like just two days ago, um, they've, they did decide as a last minute measure, get, get as many animals microchipped as possible, but it's very last minute. It should have been planned earlier. I remember seeing that. Yeah. Um, but. It did, wasn't released out in any any fashion, so that the city would people would know about it. Right. Um, it only came out as an email notification, and you can see all of these in there. But one indication, and this is what I when I spoke to the, um, the supervisor that's over there, she's in a very distressed um, state. Um, she's concerned that that the animal services is making less money than ever before. Partly because all of the fees, such as licensing, microchipping, spaying and neutering, all of that is being waived as much as possible. The reason it's being waived is because of the crisis and the overcapacity. In order to get animals out, they don't have these pretty, pretty adoption events with no-kill LA, so now it's turned into crisis mode. And you know the going to the animal shelter, it's so nuts. People are kind of like, "Ooh, this is scary," you know. Ooh, you know. So they, they aren't their their numbers are dropping in adoptions. But um, her her concern was that all of the emails for three years have been uh, free microchipping, free you know spaying, tags, tags, free tags. free licensing, come and adopt an event. And, and that's an indication of, of how distressed they are. Anyway. What can we do? What, what should we be? I, I, would, I would hope that after supporting um, the, the general manager to ask that she look at, you know, really do a big outreach and really go to the, the different shelters and and speak with the staff and the volunteers and find out what the history of the no-kill situation has been. She may not know, may, I mean, she may have been briefed on it or it may be part of the conversation, but, but she does come from a no-kill uh, place and that's Long Beach. But the, the, the program that was promised for Los Angeles is completely broken down. And there doesn't... You mean money? Was it money they were going to give them that No, they left. They, oh, no, the, the, they the, left. The, 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 they just the, left. And, and uh, the, the explanation is, I'm, I'm still trying to find the explanation because the reports that, that uh, Best Friends gave, when I open it, those, those notifications as to why are now gone from their website. So I have to try to shush out the reason, reasons why they've left. Why can't she ask for more money from the city? Because they require it. The, I mean, everybody else is raising. Paul Coretz, Paul Coretz in 2022 asked for more money. And I, I'll send you guys some links to articles that kind of explain the history. But Paul Coretz asked in 2022, and he was summarily kind of shut down.
for various reasons. What was the 4.75 million that is referenced in one of these documents? Is it increased? Well, it well, increased 18 percent, which the gave budget was increased 18 percent, which gave them 4.75 million. This is just now which been approved. Which gives them now 31 million point seven. This has just been approved, but there there is a, there is a problem with that. The interim general manager. Um, had, along with what Coretz had, had asked for, <coughs> when their pandemic happened, there was a big decrease in staff. Everybody who could retire, retired. Everybody, it left. The, the staff, they already were, before the pandemic, pretty understaffed for their, their services that they've been doing and their, their capacity and, and what, you know. They already were at the, the lower end. So, so the problem is, is that they need more funds to bring it back up to the level, but they also need more employees. They, they just need more employees. Okay. They just do. Mm -hmm. well, they're, the, they the, may not exist. It's one thing to say we need to hire more people. But and, and part of it there. is, and part of it is, is that other cities can incentivize. They have incentivized um, getting getting these staff by having the kind of hiring incentives that that go along with getting skilled people. Um, can we lose our animal shelter? Could it close down because there's lack of funds or support? It's it's not a matter that what's happening is is that they. The, the animal shelter currently is running more than double over capacity. They have 80 kennels and they, it fluctuates between 160 dogs. And right now, I think today, it's now to 148 because there was a, a lot of adoptions over the weekend. There are 100 kittens and uh, for a total of 200 and, 230, I believe it was, um, but 100 kittens, and that's only the start of the kittens that keep coming in because it's kitten season. Um, and that, that doesn't include rabbits and gerbils and hamsters and guinea pigs and, and pot-bellied pigs and that kind of thing. But um, so, and they have a waiting list. Um, there are, are they even wanting to adopt? No, the opposite. Um, there's a crisis in that there are so many people that are dropping off their animals that they can no longer, they have, don't even have capacity and they are asking people to please keep your animals. Mm -hmm. um, or you're on a waiting list to do that. Um, I don't think that data is being captured by, by the media. Well, there, there is data that is being captured so that Kenneth Mejia and the controller can make these reports. And his report came out in March, and that might be something you guys want to look at because it's, it's fairly scathing on, on the, the plight of what, what is going on over there. But there is also data that's not being captured, and that's, that's partly what this other item was, but we can talk about that later. It's just... Um, there's a state bill to fix that problem. Fix? Uh, data. Da for, to help the general manager to understand the scope of the problem, for the city council to know the scope of the problem, data has to be collected. And what happened was is in 2016, um, through, through a federal law, trickling all the way down to this state and then to the city, um, the Department of Health no longer is collecting um, it, essential data uh, that is distributed to different cities. Which Department of Health is no longer? The larger, the larger entity of the Department of Health in the Calif and in, as, as, as a consequence, the California <coughs> State Department of Health. They've collected, along with rabies information, things like, like how many, you know, how many animals are. Well, I have it here. It's in here. Give an example. This was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, whether dogs and cats were relinquished by an owner or taken as strays. Um, data on owner redemptions, which is 
whether they found their dog and picked them up again. Adoptions by individuals or by rescues or, or by rescue organizations, like No Kill was supposed to do. Euthanasia, whether an animal died in custody for and uh, or was transferred to another shelter. So this data is not uniformly being collected anymore because of a decision made in 2016, and so they're trying to reinstitute it because this is valuable information. Now, I don't know if Kenneth Mejia or the city controller or the city of Los Angeles decided to fund this, the, this data, but it, they're, they're limited because they often take from files from data that, that the state or the city or these other departments in order to create their personal city data. Sounds so this like is the data that would be collected for this purpose is leading to the sad but almost inescapable solution, uh, conclusion that we're in a deep hole yeah. and, and the whole idea of no kill is not, not going to be sustainable. No, no kill is not sustainable without the, the partnership with the foundation which was promissory with, with the no kill. And they've now backed out. They've backed out. And we don't know why to find out. That, 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 frankly, it doesn't matter. The question yeah, is... Yeah, maybe we can get another one in. And well, what other one? What other one what, the, what, what Gwen is indicating here to me is this is an incredibly complicated mm -hmm. issue, problem, and, yeah. and looking for solutions. And uh, it's $31 million is a drop in the bucket in the city budget if they had $100 million. It would still be a drop in the bucket. It's it's important to us because it involves creatures that we love. But in the, in the I, scheme of things, this is uh, well. That's why I'm recommending the city, the, the city, to look at the no kill, the current state of no kill, and to restore it to what it is. If they want no kill, they have to restore the yeah. the resources in order to achieve that. You mentioned, you mentioned resources and you talked about people being lured away by other municipalities with better the perks. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm questioning, not just in this arena, but every arena, why are so many jobs open and, you know, and wanting? And much of it is, they're not high paying jobs. They require a huge amount of compassion and responsibility by people who aren't necessarily trained to, 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 to have that capacity. And it's a societal problem well beyond the Department of Animal Services here. Well, well to, to, to actually another, another thing to, that I, I added because I, it only was, came to my attention in the last couple of days is that um, with the overcrowding, with the dangerous animals staying there, there has been an increase. I, now, 600% increase. That was the number. 600% increase in, in dog bites for the staff were getting dog injured, the volunteers were getting injured, and worse than that, animals that were, that were sent out have injured the public. In fact, a, a lawsuit had hit the the, sh the desk this week. Another one from the public. But some of the animals are dangerous because of where they were before, and the family maybe they weren't feeding them. So when they dropped them off, saying we don't want this dog anymore, it he was already aggressive. Because it, it doesn't matter. The city has taken it upon itself to be responsible for these animals. Yeah. Therefore, they accept the liability of what. But then comes it, next. But I'm just saying that well, well, I'm the public was doing what they well, should be doing at the end. Yeah. 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 But that's, Our that's a topic for this entire... Yeah. I, I actually, my lip is scarred because a dog almost ripped it off. Yeah. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> you weren't a fight in warfare. I, no, this was, a, this was a food aggression situation. Sorry. Yeah, but, yeah, so I, you know, as far as understand that, that portion of it. Um, I have to feel sorry for the dogs, too. Well, yeah, absolutely. I, absolutely. I really want to, uh, they don't want to be in a <laughs> <laughs> What's our action to come from? What, 
what it's been talking about. Is there a specific well, action to be taken here? Well, I think we should look into it more. Yeah. Talk to the shelter, go to Harbor, Harbor, Harbor uh, Town Shelter here. I've written research here about the whole thing. Well, yeah. It's all research. Um, yeah. I talked to Leslie. She is very she's she's very open to coming on the board meetings to do a two minute um, status well, report, five minute status. We actually report. want to go there. Yeah. We you know oh, Dan and I can go there and pick her brain out and see how how we can help her how can we be effective to help her yeah. and you know have her give us all the issues and everything that's going on. and then we can then come back you know we can. If, the next question is, you know, do write up something to see if everybody likes what we, that we can send this letter to Stacy. The, the, yeah, the, um... You agree, right? Oh, with that. Her, yeah, what... I, I think any action... Any uh, action. That, ...that occurs that allows the group, the community to be better informed about what our animal shelter is lacking, what it needs, right. uh, if they are even interested in partnership between a, a, you know, a neighborhood council and, and, uh, and their uh, shelter down there. I think there's, there's a whole world of things that, that might open up yeah. by, and I'll just take what you say, by the visit, by the yeah. the the uh, fact that there's a lot of preliminary work, great preliminary work that's been done, yeah, and see how we might be able to advocate for uh, the shelter, but in, in a sense, indirectly, you're advocating for these animals who yeah. find themselves victim by society, and that, that's a sad thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then that gives us a better outlook and how we can then present something to Stacy. And you know, make it you know, we can do it from here, and then uh, you know, then we can maybe you know, then we can do a letter and stuff. And, and the city council has a certain amount of responsibility. The, the city council has a certain amount of responsibility that the general manager cannot and does not have her hands are tied, she's she's in the trenches. Um, funny, that's what the end says every time we visit. You know. I, I There's think plenty we want to do, plenty we could do, but our hands are tied. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm not exactly sure with the state of the situation here at our animal shelter that anyone in an official capacity such as the neighborhood council or any other stakeholder group has gone on there and says, look, we're here to help. Huh. Help us help you. Huh. We need to understand you know, the, the challenges, and, you know, we're here to do what we can. But at the very least, I mean, we had a very nice conversation with Patty, who I think was at your previous meeting. Um, but being able to sit down and talk to her as an outside stakeholder, and from her perspective, what the need is, I think there are a whole lot of different avenues in which our neighborhood council or any neighborhood council could come to the assistance by uh, a grant? Well, I, I, I won't say a grant, but there are other things that one can do without more money, and that is advocacy, going to city council, going to the mayor, going to uh, agencies and organizations that say, you know, we have a situation here at the Harper's uh, uh, shelter in we would like to see how we might be able to partner in bringing those resources here. Um, if I heard uh, Gwen correctly, the Valley Shelter, I, I don't know what, how you refer Mission, to it. Mission Hills, it was a special shelter for... But, but somehow they got chosen over all these other shelters that allowed them to get this special designation and resources for this designation. Um, so, why not our community do the same for our shelter? And I think it might be a breath of fresh air for the uh, director or whoever <coughs> is in lead down here that she does have the opportunity to, to look at 
a community entity that <coughs> is willing to help. But I, I have to put it this way too, I mean, it isn't a free ride for her either. She's going to have to get out and talk to us to help us become more informed so that we can in turn inform the community. But, but it's, a, it's something that I say all the time, it's a matter of building the, the proper relationship with them so that they know they can rely on us should you choose. If, but it has to be a partnership and I think going out there and letting her know that you do have a partnership uh, that, you know, that we're willing to take uh, on your behalf, I mean, that's, those are first steps. And, <coughs> with, you know, the, the great work that uh, Gwen has been doing in and around this area. Yes, tremendous. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think there is a path that might be in front of us. So, um... Yes, um, So, when you go and see um, Leslie, um, yes. she's going to be very frank with you. I, there, <coughs> more frank than normally because it's, it's in such a dire strait. Even if you just go there and sit and wait for her for a moment and just listen around you, you get, you get several stories right there mm -hmm. of how nuts it is. Um, it's, you know, and it, it smells unpleasant. They've never been at a capacity in an insaneness like this. They can't even keep the place clean. It's, it's, mm -hmm. It's so over capacity, but um, she'll be very frank with you and have a lot of and and be able to direct you towards a lot of the issues that they have solutions, you know. So so you will get a lot of answers, and um, so uh, I the thing is that that is an interesting bit is that. They try to present the situation with the no-kill, but of course, you know, to, to Tim. Of course, it, uh, in a tour, and he's got limited time. They can't go through the entire history of what I just explained to you. I, that, that, that took a bit. Um, and so his response to trying to be able to deal with these dangerous animals was, oh, that's, that's political suicide to, say, euthanasia. So that, again, we have to be conscious that there were promises made as to how no-kill was going to work. It, that relationship ended, and as a consequence, what's happening is, is that the, the staff are overworked. They are also being asked at this point to take um, unpaid leave. But meanwhile, there are lawsuits six million dollars, 17 million dollars for <coughs> injuries to people, you know, that hundreds of thousands, you know, that because, because the other thing is, is that, you know, just as a little vignette, when you, when you have an animal that's been intaken, you've got to test them for those things. Mm -hmm. That takes extra time. That takes resources. Mm -hmm. Because you have to sit and watch or yeah. spend time with the animals. And, and, the, and the last bit of this breakdown is, is that environmentally, this is a real crisis. Um, the animals, the kittens that end up at the shelter are a drop in the bucket as to the feral animals that are out there. Do we still have a lot of those? Feral? Oh, yes. Feral yeah. animals are out of control. Yeah. And what's happening also is that yeah, animals, families, you can't give them away. And, and there is also a culture where there are certain cultures where, oh, I'm not going to fix my animal. He needs his cojones because he's a man, you know. So, so there we are. Well, it could be people can't even afford it, maybe, right? And, and that's the other thing is to get those services. A doctor... You have to be able to the the basic policy for all for for all cities in all small cities is that they've got to keep that spay and neuter uh, campaign up. You got to keep doing as many spay and neuters as possible. This is crucial because with the spays and neuters, you're never going to get all of them. One kit, one cat, 
if you, there's a data thing where one cat by the end of the year can end up as 20 cats, you know, that's just one cat, you know. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah. you know, yeah. if I can, I'm sorry, but to go back to your comment about money, um, I, I think by doing the research, there are probably, it, it, you become more informed as to what money is it most effective in, in what direction. So, so, you know, by doing the research, money is always something that's important, but at least from a neighborhood council perspective, you know, we can only give to certain things. So maybe it's that nonprofit that goes and does the free spay and neutering and, you know, Teresa? so that... Yeah, Teresa Sardisco yeah. and Pedro Pet Pals is a huge resource, and there are others, but yeah. um, it's it's a matter of you know the the, the social outreach port, uh, component of it is being I I believe and I'm going to be very frank has absolutely no accountability. They've done a shh job, <laughs> and and You're talking about who? the social the, the social who, who, who. media. The department? By the department? Is that what you're By asking? that particular department, the yeah. social media, they've they've got they've reduced their standard outreach. Now, uh, granted, there is, has been no <coughs> permanent general manager, but I don't understand why the interim general manager hasn't yeah, been, hasn't been able to get. I, I'm not sure what the breakdown is, mm. but they have been not doing their job by any measure. I mean, uh, I, I was a bit disappointed that I've seen Orange County shelters showing up on the news for Adopt-A-Pet. I've seen Pasadena for Adopt-A-Pet. I've heard them on the radio on the way home. Right. I, heard, I heard, yeah, we're doing a thing in Pasadena, mm -hmm. you know, um, but nothing, uh, nothing for the city of L.A. Mm -hmm. And it's... It, there's a lot of mountains in the city of LA. It, the, the, I remember reading an article and they said more and more people are turning their pets in because they can't afford it. Yes. Or they lose their they lose apartment their, and so they live in their car or they lose their house and they have to their apartment they don't allow pets. And it's not that they want to give it up, but they have and, to. And, and that is a service, and that is a service actually, that's one of the programs that, that needs to be looked at by Stacey Danes and pr promoted and funded. Um, there, for example, right now, and it just started, there's two days a week that somebody is now, it's a volunteer um, organization, they're, they're sitting at a desk outside of Harbor, and they see somebody coming up with a dog, and they're, they're asking, oh, are you here for a spay, a neuter, or what? No, I'm here to drop off my dog. And before they even get in the shelter, they're starting to try to prevent them from doing that. They're actually saying, oh, did you know that we have a food program? Is it about food? Is it about medical care? Are you having a problem? And there is now an outlet, but it, it requires a no-kill or a volunteer 501c3 to provide those services to, to try to prevent this. And but I mean, if they can't keep it. To your, to your point, the pandemic, a lot of people adopted dogs. And, yeah. and animals, yeah. and now they're returning. There seems to be the data is not. That's that's data that that is all colloquial. You can't. What somebody says is like, oh, I found this dog, but it's really their dog. Oh, I I can't keep the dog because I'm moving. Who knows? Who knows? Um, oh, yeah, but <laughs> you, you get that too. But we'll take care of it. We'll get it. Good. Thanks for coming and doing it. I, this. this is excellent for uh, and for I'll, to, I'll yeah. provide. I'll provide what I've kind of composed some of the thoughts, but there is so much. You guys could go for days on this one. So next meeting is July twenty fifth uh, at not six o'clock. Oh, it's always five o'clock. <laughs> I sent you the agenda. Yeah. I got it. I looked at it. I read it wrong. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank, uh, so we are adjourned? At 6.56 p.m.? We are adjourned.